hear this Easter story. The disciples have gone through utter desolation. They have laid in the tomb the body of the hope of their hearts and of the world, and they went away for a time, and they have come back in order to pay honor and to mark their grief, and they encounter miracle. Hear how it is, the first Easter morning unfolded in the heart of this world. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and she saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb and they were running together. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb and bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. And he also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. And it wasn't with the other cloths, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. And he saw and he believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. But Mary, Mary stayed. Mary stood outside near the tomb weeping. And as she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb and she saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. And the angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. And as soon as she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Well, thinking he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me for I haven't yet gone up to my father. So go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I am going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them everything that Jesus had said to her. <laughs> May God add, a blessing to the hearing and please God the comprehension of this word. Amen. So about six years ago here at Christ United Methodist Church, we came up with what we thought was a great idea. We wanted to invite the community into a celebration of hope and new life right before Easter. And we wanted to do that inviting in such a way that all people felt welcomed, regardless of their faith tradition. So we began a grand party that we called and continue to call the Celebration of Creation for the Saturday before Easter. 
Well, the party, we thought, should feature live animals of all kinds. So there were, at the party, baby cows and chickens and lambs and bunnies. And the grand jewel in the creation crown on that day was a real live donkey. We were so excited for children to be able to come and put their hands on a live creature and smell a live creature and behold, a live creature. How do you celebrate creation better than that? So everything got set up and then it started to rain a lot, which felt like disaster. So the decision was made at the time to move the whole party indoors into the commons. All of the creatures came into this ark of a church, all of them, including the donkey and his hay. And the room quickly filled with the rich and pungent aroma of wet creatures in a warm and confined space. And that smell mingled with the smell of popcorn because we have no parties without popcorn in this church. It's a rule. That smell became a palpable presence in the commons. And then that smell became even more compelling because the donkey did what animals do. The donkey unloaded some of the hay that he had processed in his very own belly. The donkey unloaded on the floor of the commons to the shrieks of children. So to the rescue, <laughs> came one of our members, the indomitable Tracy Ott. Tracy is a woman who was raised on a farm, so she took up a shovel and she started mucking out the commons, as one would, right? Well, the rain stopped, the animals were ushered outside, the celebration of creation commenced, the floor was eventually washed, and the next day, the church smelled of lilies and coffee, and the church rang with the sounds of timpani and organ, and the day the donkey unloaded in the commons will go down for all time as the worst best idea ever, or was it the best, worst idea ever? <laughs> I share the story of the best, worst idea ever because it delights me. And I share the story of the best, worst idea ever because it's life, isn't it? Last year, I preached Easter Sunday from my living room. We were new into the pandemic and we were all unsure about what it would mean in our lives. Over the past year, we have tried everything we know, you and I, to make life work in the midst of an immense physical, social, and spiritual challenge. We have adapted and we have sheltered and we, like the children on that long ago celebration of creation party, we have shrieked and we have endured. We have lived in the funk of fear and in the pain of isolation. And throughout the pandemic, throughout the pandemic, we have leaned into the promises and the presence of our holy God. So we have been mindful as we experienced Holy Week this past week. Our hearts have been exquisitely open, haven't they? To the telling of heartache, we hear it in a totally different way because we have walked together the story of how it is the hope of the world, Jesus the Christ, who gave his life to teach us and show us the power of love we have observed, we have experienced being heartbroken as Jesus was hailed as hero 
and abandoned and despised and executed, Jesus was sacrificed on the altar of fear and sealed away supposedly for all time in a tomb. And how is it? How is it, we might ask, that God could allow such pain? And how is it that crucifixion did not end the story of the worst, best idea ever? How is it that we are here, thousands of years later, singing our gratitude for the miracle that is Easter? We are here because the shout of hope that is Easter is not some long ago and dusty story. Easter is our shared proclamation. Stones of despair are rolled away. The power of love triumphs over the stink of fear. Jesus Christ is risen thousands of years ago and Jesus Christ is risen today. We are called by God's best idea ever to come out of our tombs. We are called, you and I, from the places of death that confine the expansive day dance that is life. We are called, you and I, to live resurrection. Every day we are given, we are called to live resurrection. The power of God's unstoppable and irrepressible and insistent and fierce and immense and holy love unshackled the hearts of those who encountered Jesus in that long ago garden. And the power of God's unstoppable, irrepressible, insistent and fierce and immense and holy love is meant to unshackle our hearts. And we are called every day we are given to live to give thanks that we are called to pay attention and to practice awe and wonder. And that is just the point, says poet Mary Oliver. The point, Mary Oliver says, is how the world, moist and beautiful, calls to each of us to make a new and serious response. That's the big question, the one the world throws to you every morning. Then that question is this, here you are, alive. Would you like to make a comment? Brothers and sisters of the risen Christ, make a comment. Christ is alive. Christ is alive whenever the people of Jesus stir themselves to practice the irrevocable truth that God is lived love. God is also rhubarb poking out from the frozen earth. God is the wisdom of our ancestors and our elders. God is vaccines and hugs and tears and pain and children and donuts and donkey dung and and God is those who pick up a shovel, right? God is all of those things. And God is in it with us forevermore. The stones of life get rolled away. They do. Happy Easter. God bless. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.